So this video will just be doing some environment thumbnails. These are great warm-ups. The actual time is only an hour and a half, so you can get a lot done. And with these thumbnails, you can always blow them up and take them into a final image once you're happy with them. Because ultimately, if the thumbnail looks good, the the full detailed image is going to look good. So you're thinking about general read, composition, uh, value breakup, and color if you're working in color. So just laying in some basic uh, tone across the board, bringing in the lasso tool, which will be the the clouds. Also created an action which uh, creates a document with all these thumbnails set up so you can experiment with that yourself and create your actions. Also have you know thumbnails for cinematic or other dimensions that I regularly work with. So at this stage thinking more about some basic shapes and being quite random really. Um, um, I want to get something down which will somewhat spawn ideas for the next stages as I begin to sculpt out the forms and add details and think it more about you know the story that's happening in each frame. I've I've been thinking about that more and more lately. It, it was a consideration I probably should have paid more attention to in the past, but I think about it a lot more now. And I think about a whole backstory to each frame, even if it's a simple story such as an explorer discovers some ancient ruins or something like that. But you know, there's so much, so many ideas that can um, then come from that simple idea, and that will really help you in your decision making for what's happening with within the composition. And I also think it's valuable to think about if you're designing an environment or anything like that, you think of perhaps it might be a video game. So for this first frame, I'm thinking, yeah, the basic idea that you're in this game and you're kind of trekking through this open world and you're kind of thinking that oh, there's nothing really out here, but then you know you see staircases and you see this, you know these carvings in the rock, and you know it gives some interest to the the person playing it, and they think oh I'll go explore that because in all the desolation of the desert, you actually find something that looks kind of man-made and interesting, and. Yeah, so I've included stairs and things and thinking about how the player might, you know, navigate this this area. And then yeah, just um really just setting my train of thought go along in the process. I don't have an idea set in stone from the start, it's more about exploring what works and what doesn't and then um, yeah just kind of trusting that I've been fed enough information over the years to come up with something interesting and oftentimes it is just uh, playing around and experimenting so I might paint something in and think it was a good idea and then once I actually have it painted, I think, oh, this doesn't look right, it's not working. So the the joy of digital is you, you don't have to worry about that stuff. You can just paint straight over it if you're not happy with it. And another thing that will make your process much faster in this is to have all your keys hot keyed. Just as if you're playing a video game, you know, you're playing like, I don't know, some sort of shooter or FPS, you know, it's always quicker to use your hotkeys to choose different weapons and things and think of the same principle with with painting. If you have all your um, tools hotkeyed, you can easily click, you know, 
brush, um, eraser, smudge tool, all this stuff and it's really going to speed things up and then you can also create actions for choosing your most used brushes because really um, you don't want to be thinking about tools in the sense of you don't want to be struggling to find the, find where your tools are, you just want to be focused on the painting. And yeah, keeping the values very similar at this stage, uh, thinking about more general read and the elements within the page and then once I have those established I can think about where I want my focal point to be and then you know bring in more contrast and light and dark to that area and generally your focal point will contain those light, lightest lights and darkest darks So with the polygonal lasso, I'm selecting areas, boosting the levels, and also on a new layer, bringing in some color dodge and overlay layers, just to brighten up those areas of interest. And then also things such as the sharpen filter which will pop out details and also color balance. Also use a technique of you create a, an adjustment layer, in this case curves, and then you paint into the mask of the, of the adjustment layer so you can um, paint back in bits or paint back out parts. So you may lighten it and then you can brush back out parts of that adjustment layer and that will then darken it because the original image is darker than the curves. So you can experiment with that. Yeah, the, the entire process, it only took an hour and a half, it's really not that long and it does give me some good good practice and warm up but also if I'm happy with one in this case I felt the the very first one that I did was the most successful and I would be very interested in um, increasing the size of it and then going in and painting it to final So yeah, it's um, it's a fun process. You can try it yourself. Just find subject matter that you're interested in, interesting shapes and things, colors and all that. Some photos and just use them as inspiration. Or if there's something that you're really familiar with and you just want to practice, you know, your memory and imagination stuff. You don't even need the reference. You can just go in and paint. It's a really fun, quick, easy process, and there you have it. So try it yourself, and check out more videos to come. If you like them, let me know. Thanks for watching.